This is Brock Palin from RCE, and I have Jeff Squires from Cisco. Greetings! We have with us two developers from the Visit Visualization Project. Uh, Sean, Jeremy, you guys there? Yep. Yeah. Hey there, Brock. Hey, Jeff. Thanks for taking some time out with us. Uh, quickly, can you guys give us your affiliation and how you're involved with this project? Uh, sure. Um, so uh, this this is Sean. I'm from uh, Oak Ridge National Laboratory. I'm the uh, the visualization uh, lead there, and uh, I was one of the original uh, designers of the visit uh, of the visit system, and I'm still uh, one of the developers of it. And I'm Jeremy, and I'm also at Oak Ridge, and uh, used to come from Livermore, where again I was also one of the the original developers on the project, and I'm still involved with it um, in a few ways and a few different projects as well. Well, guys, thanks for taking your time to uh, talk with us today. I wonder if you could give us the uh, short version. You know, what, what is Visit? Yeah, so Visit is uh, it's, it's an interesting uh, animal. It's, it's a turnkey visualization tool. It's, it's a tool that's designed for people to uh, be able to get understanding out of scientific data sets. And it's, it's, it can be pretty pictures. It can be statistical analyses and graphs. It can be... It, pretty much anything you want if you're trying to get better understanding of the results generally of a, of a high performance uh, computing simulation. That's the you know, that's the 10 second version of, of what Visit does, but obviously the, the, the answer can be much more complex. Okay, so go, go ahead and give us one of the. So, like, what would one of your users do? So, they, they do a big parallel run and they get a couple terabytes of data and then they use Visit to visualize it or. Sure, I can uh, I can maybe go through a, a simple conceptual workflow here. So you've definitely got the right start there, right? You know, typically um, a, a scientist will write a whole bunch of data out to disk. So the first thing that you need in in your sort of workflow pipeline here is reading the data off of disk. So we have about a hundred different file format readers right now. Um, I can certainly talk about those in more detail, but you know, there's some that are ASCII-based, some that are binary, uh, HDF5 and NetCDF, things like that. Um, a lot of them support parallel I.O. Uh, and then after you've read in the data, one thing you might want to do with it is create new expression, like you might want to calculate density from volume and mass and, and derive new quantities. Um, we have you know, dozens of different ways of operating on your data uh, capabilities for slicing, subsetting, transforming uh, your data. And then typically you go through and you plot the data to your screen. So we have about 20 to 30 different plots for, these include ways of rendering your data, whether it's, you know, mapping values to colors or uh, doing volumetric rendering. Um, and other than plotting your data, you might want to do quantitative analysis, whether it's queries, um, or, or other ways of extracting data, um, maybe scientific-based queries, you know, calculating centroid of some object, maybe feature extraction kinds of things. Um, and you might want to save out the results. Obviously, we can save as images, as you expect from a visualization tool, but you can use Visit as sort of a larger tool in a, in a processing pipeline. You can save data files out as, for instance, importing into ray tracers or out to actual... Um, scientific data files for importing to other tools. And, of course, the entire time you're interacting with Visit, you do it through either a graphical interface or a Python interface or a Java interface. So we have a few different fun in interfaces you can um, swap out and use uh, in the same way. Oh, that sounds like a, a lot of code there. So is, is this a very large project? Are there a lot of developers on it? Yeah, I... I there is a there are a good number of developers. I don't know that we have an exact number right now. We were taking a look at the uh, at the uh, at the code repository and trying to figure out who has done major development on it in the last six months or so. Jeremy, I think you were you had put together a, a, a list. Do you have a count of, of how many people have been? Yeah, doing sure. So I mean, uh, this list of names just came from actual commits to to the repository, but we have more developers than this. But I can just give you the brief list. We have Sean Ahern and myself, Jeremy Meredith from. Oak Ridge, as well as Dave Pugmire here. Um, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. We have certainly some of the original developers uh, still there as well. Um, we have Kathleen Bunnell, Dave Bremer, Eric Bruger, Hank Childs, Cyrus Harrison, Mark Miller, and Brad Whitlock. All those folks are at Lawrence Livermore National Lab. Um, at University of Utah in the Scientific Computing and Imaging Institute, I believe, are Alan Sanderson and Tom Fogel. 
and Gunther Weber from Lawrence Berkeley Lab. So those are the people who sort of, maybe not full-time, but something approximating full-time um, committing to the project. And certainly the project started back in 2000 uh, with about half a dozen full-time developers. So uh, overall, yeah, it's, it's a very large project, a whole lot of man years going into it. And it's now actually gotten uh, even international. We've got uh, we've got a couple developers in Britain who are doing uh, who are contributing. We've got um, we've got someone in France who is working on uh, helping uh, uh, doing internationalization. Um, it really has exploded in the last couple of years in terms of uh, contributions. Yeah, and University of California Davis, and I mean, so we've got people at half a dozen or a dozen or, or even more universities, you know, whether they're contributing just smaller code chunks and so forth. We do have in, uh, when you install Visit, there's a contributors file uh, that lists uh, a little more comprehensively. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I, let me let me digress from that and go go back into the you know the what is visit kind of uh, category sure. here. So, is visit itself a parallel application? Because it sounds like you know to operate on super huge data sets, it, it itself might benefit from from going parallel. So yes, it is. But I think it's important to understand somewhat of what the architecture is with Visit before we talk about that piece. Visit is actually a number of different components which can all talk to each other, mm -hmm. um, and. Certain parts of it are parallel and certain parts are not. The basic concept of Visit is a client-server architecture where uh, the user will run a front-end client, which is a, a GUI interface generally, um, that takes advantage of their local graphics cards. And then the actual data processing happens out on a, a server, or what we call the engine. Um, and generally, we have the engine sitting close to wherever the data happens to be. It might be around their local workstation, but it might be on a large parallel supercomputer uh, somewhere or a visualization cluster. And that engine piece of it, where the data I.O. happens, where the analysis algorithms run, that one has been parallel, I think, since the inception of Visit. We knew that we needed to be able to go to large-scale parallelism. And so um, that one, actually, we've gone to thousands of, of processors. I think the largest one we've done has been uh, over 8,000 processors. Um, but, but the user is not, uh, is not stuck with doing that. It also allows you to go all the way down to very small data sets that are just on someone's local workstation or, or on their laptop. Um, and so it can scale up and down depending on what the data need and what the user need is. So uh, one of the things in keeping with the theme of, of a turnkey application to make things easy for users, uh, you know, we try to hide a lot of the complexity of, of launching multiple components as well. So, for instance, the first time somebody installs on, say, some big machine at, at NERSC, um, they'd set up this host profile, uh, which includes some information, you know, not just about the machine names, but what kind of job launcher and, you know, what kind of MPI it's using. And um, that way, when the user wants to connect, even... If they're starting a visit on their little local laptop, um, when they go to open a file, they can actually just punch in the host name of that big machine. It will go out, connect to that remote machine, let you browse the remote file system, open files, um, and at some point, if you need to launch a parallel engine to do the analysis on your data there, uh, it hopefully tries to ask you just a bare minimum of questions. You know, how many processors, how many nodes, um, which bank do you want to use? And then it will understand the batch system, launch your job, and, and track all of that for you. So we definitely hide all that um, as much as possible to make it, a, you know, just a few mouse clicks. Um, and all the interaction with remote data should feel exactly the same as interacting with local data. So you already have all the information there for the batch system, so they don't have to create a PBS file or an SGE input or any of that stuff. That's that's all done by the visit itself. Yes, that's exactly. Correct. Uh, so the, basically, the way we the way we do it is visit already has knowledge in its internal scripts about a plethora of different launch systems. You know, MPI run, Moab, Slurm you name it, um, as well as you've got batch schedulers as well as job launchers underneath them. And Visit will create the PBS script for you or, or will create the, the MPI run machine file, whatever's necessary for communicating to that job control system so that the user doesn't have to deal with it. Many times the user doesn't care. They really just want to say, I want to view my data, which is on machine XYZ, and I need... 256 processors. Go do whatever you need to do to go launch over there and connect back. And Visit handles all that for you. I don't have to have all these things set up.